Hey guys, the Airsoft Tech here and welcome back. Today we're doing another episode of Airsoft Tech Talk Q&A. But before we get started, I'd like to run an idea past you guys. I've been thinking about opening up a Teespring store where I could sell Airsoft Tech themed apparel and other merchandise as well. So uh, it'd be kind of stuff that would be cool Airsoft Tech apparel, t-shirts and hoodies that were pretty cool Airsoft Tech themed to more of the Airsoft meme oriented uh, merchandise. So tell me what you guys think about that below. I've been thinking about this because it would absolutely help grow my channel. I could get better equipment. I could get better and cooler things to review. The videos would just be uh, more abundant and um, higher quality. So tell me again what you guys think about that below and that might be something you see in the near future. So let's not waste any more time and jump straight in to your all's questions. Cal Packadin Bassmaster asks, what in your opinion is the best gearbox overall? So I have worked on all kinds of gearbox shells, version 1 through version 7, some Tokyo Marui next-gen recoil shock M4s, and a, a bunch of other stuff in between. So I kind of feel like uh, I have a good opinion on this, and I think that the version 3 is by far my favorite gearbox shell to work on, and to get the optimal performance out of as well. So I like version 3 because, well, for several reasons. The front of the gearbox shell is significantly more reinforced than a version 2. The wiring for a version 3 gearbox is outside of the gearbox shell as opposed to inside. I'm really not a big fan of internal wiring because it just leaves room for things to get scraped up and torn up and whatnot. So I don't really like the internal wiring of a version 2. That's why I like the version 3. And you can get version 3s and G36s, AKs. I know there's some MP5Ks that do version 3. Six, uh, SIGs do version 3s as well. So really, a gearbox shell is going to limit you. If you pick a version 2, you're going to be limited to an M4 for the most part. If you pick a version 3, you're going to be limited to G36 and AK. It really just depends on what preference you have. But uh, personally, I really like the version 3 gearbox shell for the reasons I mentioned earlier. Andrew Fair asks, is there a performance difference when correcting AOE by shimming the piston head versus against the cylinder head? So yes, there technically is a difference between correcting angle of engagement between your piston and piston head and just simply off of your cylinder head. And so the difference really starts to come into play in those really high performance builds, DSGs and DMRs. It's really not going to come into effect a whole lot whenever you're playing around with less than 30 rounds a second. That's not really going to, you're not really going to notice much of a difference. And so the difference comes in weight. And so when you're correcting angle of engagement, you have to remember that when you correct angle of engagement, you are losing volume in your cylinder head because you're pushing, you're either doing one of these two things, you're pushing your piston further into the cylinder, losing volume, or you're not allowing the piston to come all the way down on the cylinder head, therefore losing volume. So you can do one of two things. You can put the spacer on the cylinder head to help dampen the impact that the piston has and spring has on the front of the gearbox shell, therefore also losing volume, or you can add extra weight to the piston, which kind of transfers and kind of has a jewel creep effect on your BB, but you're also still losing volume. Now, personally, when I can, I try to get away with adding weight to the piston and correcting angle of engagement that way, because it allows me to take effect of jewel creep a little bit better. And so that's my personal preference. If you're running a really weak gearbox shell, like a G&G &G gearbox shell, like one of the really thin plastic, not plastic, pot metal kind of gearbox shells, you probably should reinforce the front with a sorbothane pad or a faucet washer at the bare minimum and not be risky with weight. But if you're running a Lonex gearbox shell or a retro arms or something with a lot of beef in the front, like a version three, you don't have to worry a whole lot about the stress you're gonna place on that. So in those cases, I tend to put a lot of weight on the piston via correcting angle of engagement. And I like to get away with that when I can, but ultimately it's a personal preference and it's just what you want to do. Shin Cairo asks, in an AEG, what is short stroking? When and what gear or teeth will you short stroke for a certain build? How do you determine how many teeth to remove? All right, so before I go into detail of this question, if you guys don't want to listen to this answer, that's totally fine. I have a video talking about short stroking on my channel. If you want to watch that, it gives a really detailed explanation, but be sure to come back for the other questions. So short stroking simply is removing teeth from your sector gear that allows the sector gear to let go of the piston before it's fully pulled it back. Therefore taking advantage of less of your spring and less volume in your cylinder. So the reason we do this is when we reach such high levels of RPS in a single stroke sector gear build, like let's say we're pushing 40 rounds per second on an M120 spring. 
we can short stroke to lower the FPS of our gun so that we can meet a particular field limit, therefore also helping us to prevent hitting premature engagement, which I also have a video on that in my channel. So like I said, short stroking, you're going to remove a tooth from the beginning side of your sector gear where it impacts the pickup tooth on your piston right here. Um, so you do the you do this side here because if you do the back side of it, you're actually going to start running into a problem where your tappet plate might not release properly, or your cutoff lever might not engage properly, a bunch of things like that, which I'm not going to fully go into at this time. But short stroking again, removing teeth from your the front portion of your sector gear here to allow your piston to be released sooner, therefore taking advantage of less of your spring. Now each tooth you short stroke, the general rule of thumb is you're going to lose about 10 to 20 FPS. Now the reason we have such a broad uh, parameter there for loss in FPS is because not all springs are the same. Obviously an M190 is gonna be different from an M110 and not all volume setups are the same either. So you gotta weigh your volume setup with your uh, spring setup and kind of really closely determine what kind of short stroking you wanna do. Again, I go into a lot more detail on this topic in a previous video, so go check that out if this is not a sufficient enough answer. Axart asks, what gear ratio should I use when building a DMR that shoots around 500 plus FPS? And is a tight bore barrel going to improve my FPS? So when I build DMRs, I like to think of efficiency uh, primarily in the gearbox. So when building a DMR, you gotta think you're gonna be using this thing on semi-auto more frequently than you're gonna be using it on full auto, obviously. And that means that you're gonna be pulling more amps through your motor because semi-auto draws more amps. And so again, I have to think of efficiency. Now, I don't like to use 13 to one or 14 to one ratio gears for things like DMR just because you're gonna be pulling a lot of amps through your motor, and that's not really optimal when you're firing a semi-auto gun very frequently. So again, I don't like to use low ratio gears. Personally, I like to use 18 to one ratio gears, bare minimum, with about a 22 TPA or even higher motor, just again, to take advantage of efficiency. Now, optimally, I would prefer a 20 to one ratio gears with an 18 to one or 22 TPA motor, or sorry, with an 18 TPA or 22 TPA motor, because then this would take advantage of really strong gears like Siege Tech combined with a really good motor like an 18 TPA JG Red or a 22 TPA JG Blue motor. Now, in terms of tight bores and, and DMRs, I, again, I really prefer uh, the more efficient approach, and that is not spending money on an ex extremely tight, expensive, nice barrel. I really like brass 6.08 millimeter barrels. I like to polish them out, make them really nice, make sure there's no dents or scratches in it, and really focus on the hop-up chamber, because that's where a lot of your work is happening. And so that's what I like to do for DMRs. That's again my personal preference. I know people that build 10 to 1 DMRs with a 22 TPA motor and they function just fine. But again, think of in terms of efficiency and what you're doing to your gun. Create an efficient system and you will create a reliable system. I bench press yo girl asks, which is better for reducing FPS? Short stroking or spring cutting? I have an upgraded SEMA AK that I need to take 40 FPS off of, but I'm worried about under voluming. So I always recommend short stroking over spring cutting. Spring cutting is a very inaccurate way of lowering your FPS and it also could create significant overspin and double, triple shot. It's just not fun to play with. So I would not cut a spring in an upgraded gun whatsoever. If you can't just drop it into a spring, which is honestly what I would recommend in this case, and you have to short stroke, try cutting one tooth off and see where that sits you on your chronograph. If one tooth doesn't get you low enough, try another tooth. Now, I don't really worry too much about voluming and short stroking unless I'm pushing past three or four teeth, then it might start to become an issue, especially if you're correcting angle of engagement off of your cylinder head. That could definitely start to be an issue that I would worry about, but I wouldn't worry about it past or before three teeth. I would start to worry about it between three and four teeth. If two teeth cutting off the sector gear doesn't do it for you, I would start to reevaluate your system and see what other, what other things you can do to lower your FPS, such as a weaker spring. All right, guys, that's all the time I have today for answering your questions. If I didn't answer your question, I'm sorry. I try to answer the questions that are the most popular slash most appealing to me. If I notice a trend in the uh, comments, I'll try to answer a question that answers the whole trend. But uh, again, if your question didn't get answered this time around, I apologize. But uh, I make uh, an occasional community post where I ask for questions for this episode or for these types of episodes. So if you see that, leave your comment, leave your question upvote your favorite and I will do my best to get around to it. 
And just like on the last episode of Airsoft Tech Talk Q&A, uh, one of uh, you guys commented and corrected me on a question. And if you do find one of my uh, answers to be inaccurate, correct it below. And if it's you know something that I agree with, and I think you're right, I'll pin it to the top so everybody can see the corrected info. But as always, please like, comment, and subscribe to this channel. It definitely helps me grow. I think the last video I made a little over a week ago, I saw a three or 400 subscriber jump since that video. So I think I know what type of video you guys want to see, and it starts with the D for DSG, of course. But again, thank you guys so much for watching. I'll see you guys in the next episode of whatever the heck I do. But until then, stay tuned, Tex.